And the Lone Ranger appeared on Happy Days too, but it wasn't Clayton Moore, it was John Hart. No, no, we, we were very disappointed we yeah. couldn't get him. But I was so thrilled to be on the Lone Ranger. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a, and the fact that he pers kept continuing that persona, how wonderful. Howdy folks, I'm the old ranger. And today we're gonna go way back to Death Valley days, to Zane Gray Theater, to the Lone Ranger. Our guest is somebody who was in all of those shows. You don't know her from them. You know her from a hit show that lasted over a decade. Our guest today is Marion Ross. Please welcome her. <laughs> It's nice to see you children. <laughs> You've all turned out so well. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> well, it's hard to believe that it's been so long since The Lone Ranger right. premiered in 1949, and you were so lucky, I think, to be a part of that. And it was early in your career. How did you get a part on The Lone Ranger? I don't know, but it, I, I probably... I, I was under contract to Paramount when I was 23, but Audrey Hepburn was just signed at the same time. So that was the end of me. You know, so. <laughs> well, she didn't get the chance to do The Lone Ranger, though. No, but I, so then I got fired, finally, out of my, you know, those seven-year contracts that you get. <clears throat> so I remember doing The Lone Ranger. I thought that would, that would be good. And I was a very serious actress, well, very serious. Well, in that episode, you were the daughter of a preacher yes. building a home for uh, orphaned kids. There was a doctor who wanted to kill your father in this episode. The Lone Ranger came to your rescue and your father's. I know. So it was, it was, it was at the end of the show when I said, who was that masked man? And I never got to thank him. <laughs> And the, the thing that interested me the most was all these cowboys, and I was such a, I was an actress, serious, it's very true. serious actress. And all those men who play poker all day over there, <laughs> wait for their chance to go on, I, I thought, oh, I can't believe it. Also, I was having my period at the same time, so <laughs> I, I, I was, I, I used to get these terrible cramps. I would faint. I would go in the bathroom. I would faint on the bathroom floor. And then after, and I would lay there for like an hour till I recovered. And then I would come and, and acting some more. That's what I remember the most. Yes. <laughs> I remember that bathroom. <laughs> well, uh, those early shows like that, they, from what we understand, they shot them so quickly, too. Uh, several episodes at a time. Do you think, how many days do you think it was? Two days, probably. Really? Really? No, but, and Clayton Moore was, of course, perfect. Tonto was perfect. Mm -hmm. Everybody was. It was, it was a lovely, lovely experience. I was just, if you see the show, I was so serious. Took it so seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm honored to be in that. It's one of my treasures. Well, you should be. To have been on the Lone Ranger. Well, let me ask you about the the character of the Lone Ranger. Then, when you were growing up, did you listen to it on the radio too? Well, I must have, but I'm from Minnesota, so we're not westerns. Oh, know, they didn't not, have radios. We had, <laughs> we we did. Well, I, we certainly had Lux Radio Theater. Oh you know? yes. And Jack Armstrong shows, shows you how old I am, because I'm 90, almost 91. Ooh. After this brief but important message, we'll tell you about next week's exciting story of the Lone Ranger. So radio, radio was very, very important. But I had a Canadian mother from Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. and she was Irish. And she said, you couldn't be anything. So I thought, I will, I will, mother, I will be. So that's how I got all my drive 
was from my mother. D how did you first decide to become an actress? Just, just f because I had to be so special <laughs> and so different from anybody else. So, well, it uh, worked. By the time I would go to the library and read who's who of famous people. These were encyclopedias mm -hmm. like this. And they were born, and then now they're famous. I think, what, where, what happened? How did they get like that? So then I would read uh, the, no, the, the biography of Helen Hayes. I would read the biography of Noel Coward. And these are people that were acting when they're like nine, ten. And I thought, I, I, I got to get going. I gotta get going. <laughs> <laughs> but I had, but I, you see, I had a crippled brother. I'm trying to think. I'm, there were three of us children. I was in the middle. My crippled brother, and then my sister, who was lovely, lovely. So, because of the drive, you know, it's, where do you fall in the family line? Where, where did you get that drive? If you got that drive, that never left me. I had to become somebody. And you did. <laughs> Excepting the long comes uh, uh, Audrey Hepburn, passes oh. me right up. Oh. You know? How could she have done that to you? I God. Oh. Well, you know, she did not have a long running sitcom like Happy Days like you did. Do you see what a benefit that was? <laughs> it's like, yeah. my God, what a it's present. Great. You know, it was such a wonderful show. And you were everybody's favorite mom. And even when the show started to change, you were still the strong well, My woman, part strong got woman. better and better. Uh. My, at part at first, my, my lines, Tom Bosley, who had won the Tony on Broadway, he had, he had all the lines with, and then the Fonz came in, took, took that away from, here's Ron <laughs> Howard over there, uh, jockeying, you know. And uh, as the years went on, my part, because of use, mostly my part was, oh, Howard. <laughs> 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 or, or like, oh, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, Joni. <laughs> that, was, that was my part. And they would say to me, Marion, read here at the table, read. Uh, read all, all the other characters that, that will come in later. So. My heart is pounding, and I, I read the shit out of those. <laughs> <laughs> I just, so their heads would snap around because I'm auditioning all the time for those writers, and they would begin to write better mm. and better, better for me. Smart. Yeah. And the Lone Ranger appeared on Happy Days, too, but it wasn't Clayton Moore. It was John Hart. No, no. We, we were very disappointed that we yeah. couldn't get him. But I was so thrilled to be on The Lone Ranger. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a, and the fact that he pers kept continuing that persona, how wonderful. You know, it's like the Fonz, at a certain point, didn't want to be the Fonz. Mm -hmm. And he tried everything to break, break himself from it. Now he's gone back to it again. See, Clayton Moore was so smart in building a lifetime character. Mm -hmm. What is it about the character of the Lone Ranger you think that has made it so lasting? Uh, he, he was so honest. You trusted him. Was, there was no falsehood anywhere. It's just straight ahead, straight ahead. So you couldn't, see enough, you couldn't see a flaw. You didn't care that he was terribly human. He, he didn't have to show that side of him mm -hmm. because he was he was perfect. I mean, here you've got Superman. He was another kind of Superman. Oh, Lone Ranger. Oh, oh, oh. Who was that masked man? Oh. And I never got to thank him. Who'd you say that masked man was? Well, he's the Lone Ranger. Well, what do you know? The Lone Ranger. Hi, I'm Rob Word. Thanks for watching A Word on Westerns. Each week we post a new episode, and all you have to do is subscribe. Right here, click on this, you won't miss a one. Adios.